game. <laughs> Got you with that one. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Hollow Weekly. We're your hosts, Nick Rollins. And George Ailey. And we discovered something in the world of investigative non-journalism. <laughs> in, the, in the horror horror realm. So tell them tell them what what first how first how it came about you guys watched a watched a film yes. and then we, we discovered something. Yes. Tell them what happened. Well, here's the thing. So before we launch into it, let's uh pose this question to the listeners. Uh in horror movie history, I, I, everyone's got an opinion about what, what the best sequel is, but there are quite a few amazing franchises that made it to multiple installments. Mm-hmm. And the highest rated uh, fifth installment in horror movie history... Mm-hmm. I can say it. ...is what we're discussing today. True. Leprechaun... Leprechaun in the hood. back in no. the hood, back to the hood. <laughs> wrong, wrong answer. To the hood and back. Right <laughs> there and back again. <laughs> they could have named it fucking anything they wanted. It would have been the fine. Wouldn't have matter. <laughs> Wouldn't have matter. Uh, Final Destination Five is the only fifth horror movie franchise installment that we can discover. Messages if you find something mm-hmm. else that's rated fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, we checked and we and and and, and we checked. It beat out. I'm gonna list them all here. Just we so did. We, just we contacted so we, the Boston Globe. The Spotlight team went through this. The people, yeah, the Spotlight team. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what they do now. I mean, they, they, right. they they're like we cracked one case. Yeah, so it beat Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, the Leprechaun franchise, Child's Play, Texas Chainsaw, and by the way, when it beat Texas Chainsaw, I, I considered the fifth film that they made, mm-hmm. which ended up being the 2003 remake, which sure I still like, but it didn't didn't beat Final Destination Five. It beat Hellraiser. It beat Saw. It beat Paranormal Activity, which was like the Fifth Dimensions one. Which that right. one came out at a weird date. They usually come out. Right? Yeah, that one came out in a January, and I remember they all usually came out in October. So that was a weird, mm-hmm. weird one. Uh, and then it also beat uh, Resident Evil and The Exorcist. And there's five of those. Yeah. Well, that's the. I mean, there's a few franchises where you have to count like. Uh, weird uh, reboots or remakes or whatever to get to five, but gotcha. you know it, it. It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter what name you you could randomly pick a name. Phantom of the Opera it doesn't matter because it beat everyone. That's true. <laughs> there is no one. And, that then, didn't and beat. then last but not least, uh, we considered the last installment of the Jaws franchise, um, <laughs> and it was at a zero. And this is we, we this is all from <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes, which yes. I I think Rotten Tomatoes usually has a good. Uh, indication of uh how good a film is well Most yeah well it's yeah it's the it's the the website of record at the moment yeah and you know it's it, it's odd to me that no like when you think about the talent that went into some of these franchises mm-hmm. like when you think about like william friedkin and the exorcist or like steven fucking spielberg <laughs> or like whoever and the fact that no one ever wandered back into the territory where they had made a great movie and was like you know what fuck it let's make a great five <laughs> no one did it except for these guys are you kidding me like how is this possible right they had the stamina for it right well even you know that's that's the thing is and we we also looked up how much love um does the final destination franchise get and it's it, it, it gets a little bit it's it's not up to i mean obviously you know halloween friday the 13th nightmare like those like juggernauts are always going to be uh you know you know top tier but a lot of it uh a lot of the lists that i saw were starting to include a lot of uh paranormal activity that so, one that one crawled its way up to or list. saw yeah saw for one reason or another money yeah, reasons. Yeah, that's true. They do make a <laughs> right. fuck ton of money. Right. Um, and they're 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 and 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 to be fair, although I'm not a fan of the franchise, influence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So we uh we watched this movie, and I had never seen. I'd seen one, two, three. I didn't see four, which is why when they showed people dying in four, I was like, "What the fuck is going on? Why right. are they at a NASCAR race? Is this a safe place in <laughs> <laughs> the South? Right. We're just we're just going on." And uh, so, do you, do you want to read the synopsis for? Yeah, totally. For four? So, all right, we're, there's this is going to be like an incredibly spoilerific episode. So, 
you know, just spoilers. Everyone dies, right? <laughs> In a Final Destination movie, <laughs> spoilers. Like, I would love to be clever enough to give you a bunch of audio omens about how you're going to find out everything. Like, give you hints, but I'm not them. So, yeah, whatever. Like, you, you, you're going to get spoilers past this point. So, like, buckle up. And if you don't know that everyone dies in a Final Destination movie. Well, actually, interestingly, that's it's only happened three out of five, which means that they haven't really decided. Well, I mean, the, it, apparently, but that's what we're going to talk about. Right. They're, it's sort of over now. But like, okay. So synopsis for four. All right. Synopsis for Final Destination five. Four. God damn it. Why do I keep saying four? <laughs> you know why? It's because I haven't seen it. And I'm so like, I need to... <laughs> It's the one gap. It's in the here. one gap. During a bus ride with his colleagues to a corporate retreat, Sam experiences a horrifying vision. The suspension bridge that they and many others are crossing starts to crumble around them. When his vision ends and almost immediately starts to come true, Sam takes a quick action that saves a number of people, including his girlfriend, Molly, and his best friend, Peter. However, the survivors soon find that death will not be denied. Mm. And... Synopsis for every final Tony decision. Todd <laughs> tells you that death will not be right. denied. I well, really loved him. And okay, let me just kick this five. off. Like I have this in my head. Okay, so like I'm just gonna give you a list of things in life that I love. You ready? I love suspension bridges. Uh huh. Right. I love Tony Todd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love killer Buddha statues. Mm. I love horror movies that have an ending that I can't guess. That's true. This movie. That ending though. <laughs> <laughs> right? That ending will f- I mean, we're just going to jump all over the place. Right, right, totally. I, that was, yeah, because I'm kind of enthusiastic about it, right? Good. Yeah. The one thing I first, the one thing that I just absolutely loved was the fact that everyone kept using a flip phone. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why are they using a the flip phone? <laughs> I don't get this. It's like, because this movie, what was the release date for this movie? Like 2014 or something? Like, it yeah, came out, it's pretty it recent. It didn't come out that long ago. And I just kept thinking, why is everyone using a flip phone? Like, I just, I just don't understand. And I, it, but it didn't bother me. I was like, maybe it's like a business phone, and that's just like a cheap throwaway they gave them. Right. Fine. Whatever. Right. And then they explained why they're all using flip phones mm-hmm. in that ending that we're both huge fans of. Yes. Getting back on uh, flight one eighty. Oh, right. such a good end. I mean, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. I mean, that, that, that's a big concern with a lot of horror films is usually the end. I mean, a lot of films in general right? is how they end. And I think Final Destination 5 just totally totally nailed it. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's it, literally anyone who tries to make Final Destination 6, which mm-hmm. I've heard rumors of, should be arrested on the spot. Like, this is how it should end. Like, that yeah. that was it. Like, because it was perfect. And the weird thing is, uh, like... So one of the things that fascinates me about this movie is the people who are making it have a similar strategy to the villain in it, mm-hmm. right? So so that sort of happens sometimes. Like the Saw series, or even, even better, like not crap, like the movie Seven, mm-hmm. it wants to like morally implicate you because you're enjoying watching people suffer and you know, the, the, the main villain, like in seven knows that people enjoy watching people suffer. Mm -hmm. Right. So the Kevin Spacey's character and David Fincher are sort of holding hands, walking through this like hellscape. Right. So the final destination, people are dropping tiny little hints, like songs from like circa 2000 flip phones, Mm -hmm. like clothes from the era. But not enough where you notice, just yeah. en- enough for you to notice after it's too late, right? Mm-hmm. Which is exactly how death works in the movie, yeah. right? They have the exact same strategy as their villain, which I find like super interesting. And what I love is is they knew, <clears throat> it seemed like they knew what the audience was expecting in the film. So right. like what we were talking about was, when we were watching it was when uh, Sam was in the kitchen. Yes. Everyone's sitting there hacking shit with knives. Flames are going up in the back. Running uh, slicers. Y- like, yeah, you know, the skewers yeah. to the rotisserie. Like There's right. so many flames and pointy objects and things that right. could go wrong. And that whole time you're just like, all right, here's how he's going to get it. <laughs> and, Which way? And they just, Which way is he going to oh, get it? Right? And they just knew how to just screw with the audience the whole time. Cause totally. the whole time 
we were all like, you know, close to sweating bullets. I mean, Alex and I just watching going, oh, God. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. We know someone's going to get this way. It's not going to yeah, be Yeah, you're totally anxious, right? Like, it's like a, it's giving you like, because the thing is, you know, you're, you're disposed by evolution to try to guess mm-hmm. what's, what's the next bad thing that might happen to you. And, you know, this movie plays with that, like, you know, you're, you're like, so when you're, when you're like out in the road, you're at a crosswalk, like, and there's this car, it's kind of acting erratic, Mm -hmm. like it's revving its engine. Like, you know, when you go across the crosswalk that there's red lights, you know, the rules are you're safe. Yeah. But you're out of the corner of your eye. Like, wait, this fucker, you don't trust him. This car is not acting right. Yeah, And that's what saves you. Mm -hmm. And this movie grabs that like thing that you do in life and is like now watch this for 90 minutes <laughs> like yeah oh, right it just it, and uh, i'm just trying to think the other thing that i that i noticed aside from them just like completely screwing with the audience the whole time uh, i thought the kitchen part was probably the most like nerve-wracking mm-hmm. one i didn't feel as tense during the uh the gymnast scene right because there's not as much jane you know danger there's not that many factors, there. right? Um, but the one thing that, that I'm also kind of <laughs> kicking myself that I didn't realize was they're always talking about Paris. He's like, "Oh, I want to take this to <laughs> Princeton. You know, I, I want to go to I want to go to Paris and, and learn how to cook." And these keep mentioning Paris, 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 Paris. Right. And then the first movie that that you know you remember the flights going to Paris, and not once was I like. Wow, this movie really likes you know they really want to go to Paris, <laughs> right? This, right, but so you're right, but they're they're hiding in plain sight. This is this is one of the most amazing things about this movie to me is is that it, it shows you everything, but you don't figure it out mm-hmm. until it's too late, right? So which is which is what the same position the characters in, right? So like, so most horror franchises they can lean on a couple really, really important elements, Mm -hmm. right? One is a completely iconic villain, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could walk into literally like our favorite horror bookstore, Dark Delicacies in Burbank, right? You can walk in and buy a Jason mask or a replica of a Jason mask or a Freddy glove or whatever. Like they have iconic villains. Like what would Final Destination villain merch look like? It would be like a log truck. (laughs) <laughs> like yeah, a, or like like there's how do you represent that right like mm-hmm. he because it's never shown like he, death is never shown. the most they they got was having tony todd in the films totally to, or actually like alex pointed out which is really interesting that that for the first time in any final destination the one of the characters actually becomes the antagonist which is mm-hmm. the tom cruise looking Dude. I thought he looked more like Christian Bale. I'm still st- young. Oh Christian well, either Bale. way, doesn't matter. <laughs> Christian the Cruise. So he, <laughs> Tom Bale. Wait, I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sold on. Ah, who cares? <laughs> but the thing is, like, what's really interesting is, like, the horror movies will have an iconic villain that has like some kind of symbolism that goes with them, whether it's mm-hmm. the Candyman or you know F- Freddy or just th- this. This villain never shows his face. But, so no, but what he what it does. Yes, because I don't know if that's a male or female it doesn't matter. But the one the one thing it did was like the lights would always flicker for some reason. There was always an electrical interference. Well, and there's also music. Yeah, but like the right. but the characters don't hear the music. <laughs> well, they <laughs> hear the music. They just know what it signifies. Oh, oh, you're talking about the oh, oh, like uh, dust, dust in the, the wind. wind. I thought you were talking about the Oz. No, or yeah, in the other right. movies, like John Denver, or like I mean, there's that's right. They there's had, an audio clue and a visual, right? So they knew like some, and they they almost sort of knew that in the kitchen once um, they shot the detective. The right. lights flickered, and they were like. Okay. Well, first, how would that not freak you the fuck out? Like the lights flicker, like that's death yeah. telling you, like, like, oh man. <laughs> and they do figure it out because when the when the kitchen goes back to normal at the end, the character, the 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 protagonist, he's like, it's gone. Like, like they mm-hmm. finally know, like how the coming and going looks. But that's the thing is, like, merchandise wise, like I can go buy a Freddy versus Jason T shirt. Like, like how how do you do this with Final Destination? Like, like it's yeah. like literally. A, a random collection. I mean, it's a fucking screw yeah. on a, on a balance beam. Like it's water on an electrical cord. Like it's a microwave. Like it's, you know, like, like it's, it's, 
it's it's uh, you're you're one of your favorite people in horror, uh, Lon Chaney. Mm-hmm. His nickname was the Man of a Thousand Faces, and this is the first horror villain in the modern era who captured that. Mm-hmm. Like death has a thousand faces in this movie, right? It's every, yeah, it's every. The one thing that I noticed is anytime a character sets something down, I'm always like, all right, <laughs> there it is. Like the wrench the next wrench. to the thing. Oh. The guy's cell phone, when he went to go get the massage, yep. she placed it right next to that candle, and you knew damn well that thing was going to vibrate and knock the, yep. knock the candle over. Totally. Just, just any. Oh, the gun falling down on the, on the, uh, on the oven, which. Did they ever turn the oven off? Wait, no, they didn't. So, all right. So, so there's still right, a gun. No, right, exactly. So burning for, from 2001. <laughs> okay. Or 2000. So, no, right. no, it went off, so it blew up. But here's the thing. So, like, horror franchises either have a villain or they have an iconic protagonist. Mm-hmm. Laurie Strode, Halloween, right? Like, you have Sidney Prescott. Like, you have someone. Final Destination is one of the, the best horror franchises in history, and it's fighting... With both hands tied behind its back, it can't show you the villain, mm-hmm. and all of its characters are, characters are douchey. <laughs> That's true. That's true. At the introduction. There's no, there's no one you can get behind. Yeah, like when the movie started, like the lines and the dialogue were like they were pretty cheeseball, right? In the beginning, and I was like, oh no, oh no, please don't right. start the movie like this. But then you and Alex talked about, it and you're like, no, 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 they're supposed to be unlikable, and I was like, oh. Okay, then say whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Be, right. as, be as douchey, dumb, idiotic as you want. I know you're gonna get it. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be <laughs> on the edge of my seat the whole time. But did you ever feel sorry for any of the characters? Uh, I actually in in every Final Destination I've seen, I've felt sorry for certain characters. Like in yeah. in two, I felt sorry for the stoner kid who was waiting in his car. Like oh yeah yeah yeah. Like I mean, come on. Like he's the, just chilling. He, you're totally insignificant. Death shouldn't even like blink at you, like, <laughs> you like just... pass by. No, you're fine. So, like, right? <laughs> totally, like whatever. Yeah, I mean, I have sympathy for them, but the, but you know, there's a difference between having created a character that's that's you know on your radar enough where you're like, oh, I don't want to see them. Anything bad happen to them? And someone great like Nancy from from Nightmare or Laurie from Halloween. Mm-hmm. This, this franchise got rid of the things that every other franchise leans on like it doesn't have someone you can root you know for what? you know what right you know what i mean there this might be movie, other ones but this movie really hits home for you and i know why because and i'm not a big sports guy <laughs> <laughs> and it's but, this is coming out no, no it's not <laughs> no it's not this movie is almost like being a browns fan uh. every year Every year, you're like, we can do it. We can make it out. And then no one makes it out. They never win. And then a brand new batch of people come in. Oh, my God. And they try again. Oh, my God. Is uh, Johnny Manziel, Tony Todd, or death in this scenario? Like, I can't figure out which is. I don't but know. But they're all horrible. They're all horrible. Fuck. That's yeah. how. That's the <laughs> that's one way I could describe it. It's totally horrible. Well, that's how I would describe it, you know, to people who aren't a horror. But it doesn't matter because they're not listening. But... <laughs> But no, that's the one. That's the one thing is is if I had to have one gripe about the film, like there's not, I, I don't know, I just didn't feel a connection to like any of the characters. But then again, I did. I mean, I guess I did on some level because I felt like you know, I don't know. I don't know if not wanting them to die is a connection, right? Or if it's just like a I don't want to see, <laughs> right? Totally <laughs> see that happen. But see, so so like like t- you give me your opinion on this. Follow me mm-hmm. on this. So like. I think of Evil Dead as a pretty nihilistic uh, horror movie. Mm-hmm. Like it's willing to slash and burn. It's willing, like it's not quite Hitchcock. Like I'll kill off my main character, like whatever. Yeah. But but it's close, right? But it, they just don't have the heart to like. They have to turn Ash into a into a into a franchise unto himself. Mm -hmm. You know, in the remake, they have to have the one who suffers like walk off into the sunset, like whatever, you know, final destination for all the flaws and the fact that there's like hollow parts or whatever. It's the one who's willing to kill off everyone all the time with no exceptions Mm -hmm. and, and end it on that. Yeah. Right. No one makes it right. And, and like, to me, there's like some kind of perverse, like, like bravery 
mm. in that. They're like, this we're we're you we're not gonna give you any merchandise. We're not gonna give you anyone. You can't like you know turn around and be like you'll forever not drive behind log trucks, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, and that's pretty messed up that is willing to do that. But it's it's also kind of like what makes it like a contender for a really uh, serious, uh, influential installment in in horror history is that it was like, you know, all these other things are just like the, the, the sock puppet you put on your hand to amuse yourself. Mm-hmm. Like Michael Myers, oh, here he is. Look at his, his mask and he's like, whatever. But what happens when he gets you? You die. True. Right? Jason, what happens when he gets you? You die. So we'll just get rid of all the in between. Here's he's gonna die. Here's death, <laughs> right? Yeah. So like, there's a thing that comes along with that where I find that like interesting, but also you got to do it right, which they didn't do it right in in some of Final Destination three, some of two, uh, all of four. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you got to get it just right, but like I feel like five. Sort of nailed it. Not perfect, but close. And you know, I mean, it did better than all the films we list. <laughs> so, <laughs> and those right. are some pretty fucking good. <laughs> that's yeah, that's good a movies th- right there. That's a thing in and of itself. But you had seen the other Final Destinations, mm-hmm. except for four, except for four, yeah, right. So com- coming into this one, like, were you? How did you feel about the bridge, like, setup? It's the longest kill setup in any of the five movies. It's mm-hmm. four minutes forty four seconds. I the the one thing if I had to <clears throat> start out with just one thing I didn't like with it, mm-hmm. it was very clear that it was meant to be seen in three D at a theater, right? Because everything that happened was like popping at your face. Like the girl gets impaled from the the sail. You know that thing flies up your face. The you know the big cable swing and hit the guy. The guy falls with the bus. Um, all, all that stuff. But aside from that, I thought the way I, I, I really loved how chaotic it felt. Mm-hmm. Like if I had to compare it to another film, it would, <laughs> uh, not of the same caliber, but, uh, like the, uh, the D day from saving private, you know how that just is like, you're sure. there. That's all happening. Like it had that same sense of, 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 of chaos. Like everyone's, well, you would said something really interesting. When we were watching it about, uh, we were soldiers. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when um, and I forget his name, but I was I know his name in the office is Todd Packer, um, mm-hmm. the the guy who was the boss, <laughs> right? Um, the one like a level of the detail that I loved, and I just I can only imagine they had a blast filming that on set that day. Um, was uh the scene when he the 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 tar or whatever like the asphalt or whatever mm-hmm. uh, you know truck blows up and he's just drenched in all this like you know boiling hot stuff, and when he gets hit like he like. One of the cool things about that shot is um, he's kind of an arrogant guy. Mm -hmm. Like he's like always in charge. He's like whatever. And the bridge gets hit with a tremor and almost everyone in that shot slides off the bridge Mm -hmm. and he grabs hold and you can see it on his face. Like, fuck you people. I'm better than you. I'm going to make it. Yeah. And then as soon as he's like, I'm going to crawl back up and I'm going to make it. Boom! His the 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 part that I love <laughs> the skin on his fingers just slid right off and just failed Ugh. and then he slid right down, which reminded me of this. If we were soldiers when they pick the mechs pick up the guy and the skin on his shins. I always refer to like cheese pizza, like the the cheese oh, just God. slides. That's so bad. Right off, it's real disgusting. <laughs> but I really love that that right. shot. It's a good detail. Yeah, and I thought you know because um, you know I think that still the the second best one obviously is probably uh, two. Right. When the logs fly out, because that scene just felt amazing to watch. Yeah, the log scene is probably still the best um, setup. But. but I, but I, what I liked about um, the bridge scene was it gave you like the, uh, it was almost sort of like an action film mm-hmm. in that moment because the guy was trying to save everyone. They were trying to cross the bridge. Mm-hmm. You know, I really, I really liked that it gave them an opportunity to survive like when the right. and two when the logs are going crazy where it's sort of just like wherever you are <laughs> like you're driving <laughs> on a highway you don't have a lot of control over it right i love that it gave them full control to escape it to try to live and like all of them fucking failed right um that's i i really enjoy that like even in his vision death was like okay 
you got a shot. <laughs> you have a shot. And that's what I almost, I, I, I wonder about the, the, the rules, which is what I wanted to talk about, the rules of mm-hmm. Final, Final Destination, was say like he had a vision and he convinced everyone to get off. Would death then be like, well, that's not, that's not what I want to happen. Is that, does that break? Right. Well, that, so that is the thing that kind of like, I didn't even want to think about it too much. Cause I don't think the movie can sustain like that level of investigation, yeah. but there's, there's a, a really interesting thing that happens in this, in five versus what happens in the other ones where so he in his dream he exits the bus Mm -hmm. and everyone including him dies except for molly yeah his girlfriend right when the reality replays and he exits the bus like he still no one else uh he doesn't physically save anyone else he's just focused on molly his his friend follows him, but he's trying to convince him to come back on the bus. Mm-hmm. And everyone else just kind of wanders out of the bus. And it gains them like that crucial 20 seconds. Yeah. But he didn't do it on purpose. He's not even in the shot. He's long gone. He's halfway down the bridge mm-hmm. when when his boss and like the other people are kind of like tumbling out of the bus, right? So like, did he save them or did he not? It's kind of the same as when the, the kid... Uh, is getting in a fight with uh, Roy in the plant mm-hmm. and everyone, he, he pushes him and this guy gets falls with this hook and it, his friends afterwards are like, did you kill him? And he's like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause it's more ambiguous in this one. Like yeah. it's more ambiguous. Like in, in two, like she pulls her car across the highway on ramp. No one can get past her. She undoubtedly saves everybody. Mm-hmm. You can't argue any other way, right? But in this one, like he exits the bus and and just jets with his girlfriend. And then everyone else kind of wanders out of the bus. But like, did he save them or did they just kind of like get lucky? I think they got lucky because they were right. they were clearly looking at him like he's an idiot. <laughs> right. Nothing, right. everything's fine. Yeah, everything was more gray. Yeah. And, right. And this one. So like that. Well, this one also introduced like um, rules to death via Candyman. Tony Todd. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, and, that, and that's that was the thing that we we were debating on bringing up. And I think I think we should. I mean, they, they confirmed, right, that that was the last one. Yeah. Supposedly. Correct. Yeah, Supposedly. So we can discuss the show, but they're not going to make another but, one. You know, pr- Friday the 13th, the final chapter was the last one. So that's true. Right. But anyways, the rules yeah. is also something that. They, I don't know. I don't feel like, I don't know if I don't feel like the film followed its own rules with the whole death. Right. And the, they always refer to it as death's book. And like, I just, right. I just refer, like, I was thinking of like death balancing its check. <laughs> check <book. It's> like, <laughs> totally. Let's see. I uh, took out three bodies. <laughs> um, right. That was the one that I, I got really confused with. Cause they, they, they tell us you take a life, you live, but then they didn't follow through with any of that and was that supposed to be like a death will always get everyone like you're never safe death comes was that supposed yeah, to be like I, that or? yeah i you and i talked about this after we watched it which was uh, that frustrates me because i don't think they followed their own rules necessarily mm-hmm. and not not the not the way i could discern them like um you know molly and her boyfriend end up on the on the first final destination plane but death already like accounted for everyone at that point. Mm-hmm. So when they die, it's basically just like bonus plus two for death mathematically, you know, like whatever. But yeah, so I, you know, that's not great, but they followed a different rule. And the different rule was we just put you in charge of the last final destination movie. Do you have someone walk off into the sunset? and become a great Paris chef where they grow old and make people pastries or you fucking kill them. And they followed their deeper rule, True. which was, <laughs> well, I was also we're thinking. wrapping up the series. You were wiping you out. And if you think about the song they played over the final credits, like it's sort of cynical because it's an ACDC, like 
you want blood? We'll give you blood and song, right? Mm-hmm. And then it just shows you a bunch of kills, which is sort of like the cartoon version of what final destination is and sort of irritated me that they ended on that, like Mm -hmm. on going out on that, but it's also kind of like great. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because like death is going to have a victory dance on everyone Mm -hmm. at the end. And they were just like, you know what? They literally tipped their hat to the character that you never saw. And they were like, you're our best. Character. How many people got off the plane in the first one? Do you remember? Oh shit! No, I no. Because <laughs> it's been so long. Because technically, that like they should have been fine at the end of five, right? Right, right. That's so that's three people totally. Their friend and then Sam and Molly, and I'm trying to think of how many people get, like were saved off the plane. Like were those people then switched with? Right, exactly. Like but then again, right. none of those dudes made it. So then death is still. No, I I, I think you can probably twist it around and get really complicated and esoteric about like how the math adds up or whatever. But I don't think like, I mean, let's be honest, like it's not like no Final Destination is a great franchise, but there's no movie in the franchise that's as good as like The Exorcist or the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So like you probably it, it's not worth thinking about that much. I I don't feel like they stuck the math landing, but I feel like they stuck the landing of ending it on a good on, right. on a note like, that fans that movie would like. that movie that you, well not no not just fans would like but like like because I think the best decisions directors make in movies are ones where they're not worried about the fans so like and I felt that they were able to to make decisions like that weren't necessarily fan service the whole time but like. I don't know. You know. Ending it with number one felt like well, because oh, <laughs> that's how I felt when I went. Right, home. exactly. Oh my god, this is the plane from the yeah. Plane. But it was also poetic justice, right? But like, yeah. wh- whatever. Like that that movie that that you and I talked about that you uh, discovered uh, belatedly, which was uh, Dagon, mm-hmm. right? There's a character in that movie, and at, at every almost every important juncture of the movie, he's like, "There's two possibilities. Two possibilities. Like we go left or we go right. Like you live or you die." Mm-hmm. Like they they were making Final Destination Five. There's two possibilities. At the end of this movie, when the credits roll, someone lives, and you have to think about what's their life like after having gone through the shit, or everyone dies. And regardless of the math or the rules or like whatever, they were like, you know what, everyone dies. Yeah, <laughs> right. Which is, I mean, that's what they were about. So yeah, like. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. I right, still, right. I still enjoyed the movie. It's messy lot. though. It's no, I agree with you. It's messy. It's a little frustrating. But that's my that that's probably my only gripe. Like everything else, I thought was great. Like I thought the 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 death. What's his name? Not Todd Packer. Anyway, I'm Todd Packer. The rest of the podcast <laughs> is Todd Packer. Todd Packer. Office is a great show. <laughs> um, like I just loved like the 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 one thing we talked about. Was it didn't feel heavy like the whole film? Like you think of Final Destination, you immediately think of horror. You think of movies like Saw, Hostel. Right. You know all this. Though, not not not. I don't, it's not in the torture porn category, but it's certainly in the like. Mm-hmm. It's like the T, like the T's up to that. Sure. Um, but this movie didn't feel heavy. Like it felt no, more. Of a I had. Suspense I had a really me. weird um, urge after we watched this movie. Mm-hmm. I was walking home. It was night, like, and I was like, I, "I, I'm not done. Like, I'm so entertained. Like, I want to watch something else." And mm-hmm. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to watch a Hitchcock movie, yeah, or Tom and Jerry. That's hilarious. And, oh my god, that's right? perfect, right? <laughs> because it's got like that sinister, like strut, like Hitchcock. Like, I'm gonna, mm-hmm. but it's like total Tom and Jerry. Like sadism, yeah, <laughs> right. Like, wow. I, I, the fact that I was craving a Tom and Jerry after this was like, why is that happening? I was like, wait, I know why that's happening. That's so funny, right? Like, it was weird, and I was like, you know, but that makes that, that that makes perfect sense, though. I feel like it's that's the combination that goes into like you know, death is Tom and Jerry. <laughs> In Final Destination, <laughs> totally. There's a fan theory that can they can connect <laughs> they can connect them strings. Yeah, somehow. and 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 one of the like one of the funniest like, you know, it's it's a, a, you know, The Exorcist 
never made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, when you're watching it, it's like to me, it like gets into your bones and unsettles you, and then like afterwards, you're like it, it, it like sits there and like fucks with you more. Mm-hmm. So there's no like, but like having a good time in a horror movie, sometimes there's like a laugh, like whatever. When, <laughs> when the the Olivia dies during the LASIK mm-hmm. surgery, like you're expecting the laser to like decapitate her, cut her head off. Yeah, you know, go like through. I thought it was going to like fry her brain. Right. And then she falls out the window, tripping on the eyeball from the, the teddy bear she was like <laughs> cuddling, right? And she flies out the fucking window and and smashes into a car, right? And, and the car I, runs over her eye. Yeah, and a car, yeah, right, right. But I could not stop laughing because in the dream... She fell off the bridge in the water and a car landed on her. Mm-hmm. When she dies, she lands on a car. <laughs> like, I mean, this movie is just aggressively fucking with you, <laughs> right? Like, uh, uh, like, and death is like just laughing. And, and that's the thing is like, th- I think one of the greatest things about this franchise, like I like when horror movies, a lot of times I like when they, when they tell but don't show Mm -hmm. i i think one of the greatest endings to any horror movie i've ever watched is is john carpenter's the thing when when kurt russell's sitting across from who who may or may not be the thing Mm -hmm. and offers him a drink which like the fan theory is he gave him gasoline knowing that he wouldn't be able to tell that from from water because what the fuck would an alien Mm -hmm. know right and they're just like sitting there looking at each other like, are you the thing? Are you the thing? We'll see what we see. Like, and it, but it doesn't show it. There's no, like, it just, that's it, right? Like, yeah. you don't know. It doesn't resolve it and it doesn't show it. Like, whatever. Like, Final Destination, the greatest thing in Final Destination is the fact that death is laughing at the ridiculous ways that it's able to kill people. Mm-hmm. But you never hear the laugh. Yeah. But it's very... You know the laugh is there. You just don't hear it. And it's one of the coolest, like, you know... It's it's one of the coolest things you never... You should hear, but you don't. Yeah. And they never do it. Like, they never... Like, there's music and and outro and credits, like, whatever. But it would have been so easy for them just to have, like, someone come on and be like, (laughs) but they don't do it. But it's through all the movies. Like, there's something you don't hear, but you know is there. (laughs) I'm almost... I almost wish the last shot would have just been this like cloaked figure walking into like the acne store. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would have been. Oh my god, that would that would have been certified fresh <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes if that had been if that had been the ending. That would have been totally the best. And that's the thing is like there's these little touches like you know a, a, a lesser movie that wasn't putting much thought into it would have taken the, the, the idiot who goes to the acupuncture that you're supposed to hate the whole time. Mm-hmm. And you know, there would have been, it was like, also wearing the Bruce Lee. Yes. Oh um, my God. Totally. Which <laughs> he's such an idiot. Absurd. Right. <laughs> but so like, you know, the acupuncture doesn't kill him. The fire doesn't kill him, right? Mm-hmm. And then a lesser movie would have been like, you know, they would have shown you a Buddha statue on a shelf and the Buddha statue would have fallen down and crushed his head. Mm-hmm. But Final Destination 5 is different. There's two Buddha statues. They're exactly the same. Mm-hmm. They weigh exactly the same. The one that he teased on the way in, patted its belly and be like, be, go easy on those rice cakes, Buddha. That's the one who kills him. The other one just sits on the shelf. Mm-hmm. The one he insults is the one that gets him, yeah. right? Like because <laughs> this movie is literally like, go ahead, be an asshole. <laughs> and that's right? the thing with 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 that death, and I'm trying to think of the other one. It it teased the the, the gymnast. Um, it teased their death quite a bit. The other ones were like pretty totally like, quick. Um, yeah, this teased him a lot, more. which which I think is probably like the signature like Final Destination thing. Like in the in the gym, you had the the, the electrical wire with the water mm-hmm. going on. You had the screw on the on the balance beam, and yep. then you had you know the fan or the um uh, the the fan that was that was blowing. And I was expecting like a blade to cut loose and yep. slice your face. Um, I just I loved how with those two, those are probably two of my favorite death scenes in the in the film. Totally was um. 
just just showing like the chain reaction deaths. Totally. Like I thought that was so perfect. Like you were like, okay, she's gonna she's gonna stomp her foot on this and then break her neck. Um and then with the uh the the the, the Buddhist guy or not the Buddhist guy, the guy who died by Buddha. Um it's almost funny. Think about what you just said. Not the word. <laughs> Oh, I know <laughs> the guy inside by Buddha. Um, right? <laughs> but the, it's it's funny because I'm we've been watching a lot of Frasier, and they always ha- sort of have for most of their jokes, it's like a, like a rule of three, like something happens twice. So like someone will knock at the door, like three people will come through the door, and something funny sure. happens. Same thing with Final Destination. So it was almost like a comedic element. That's a, such a good point. With, it totally was. These deaths. That's why I was thinking Tom Jerry when I left because it totally is and the structure of a comedy. Yeah, those deaths. Those deaths were were, were, were comedic because you're like, okay, obviously this is how she's going to die. Okay, she's not going to die like that. She's going to die by this. She didn't die by that. Maybe she'll die by that. Nope, it's actually the first thing that causes the second thing that reacts to the third thing. Exactly. And then boom. And we had that one line. What was the, didn't the, 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 the guy whose who's gymnast girlfriend died, didn't, didn't he, wasn't he con, uh, comforting his friend about his girlfriend breaking up with him? Yes. His girlfriend died. And his yes. concern is, sorry, your girlfriend broke up with you. And, and the line <laughs> we said was, don't be mad. My girlfriend broke up with me. Your girlfriend broke. <laughs> totally shattered when she landed. Like, oh, Just my God. It terrible. Was horrible. Terribly. Um, but say, but with the with the with the, the comedic timing, uh, the guy with the uh, the acupuncture, it, right. it was it was the same deal. And I and I loved every minute of it. You're like, because they, they put those big ass needles in him. You're like, OK, that's how he's going to go. He lived through that. Then the fire kicks. That doesn't do anything for him. And it's the third thing that gives him. Yeah, and it was almost always the third. Because if you think about it, in the gymnast one, the screw on the balance beam was the first. Mm -hmm. The water on the electrical cord was the second. And then the powder that blew in her face was the third. (laughs) Like, it's (laughs) you're laughing because it's fucking funny. That's the thing is, like, right. That's but But I think this one did a better job. Like... I remember watching, I forget at this point which Final Destination was, but the one where the guy's working out in the gym and he gets chopped by the two, like, swords Mm -hmm. that fall from the wall. Like, I knew that was going to happen as soon as I saw them in the background. Like, that movie failed to fake me out. This one, I was faked out almost all the time. And the, the best fake out to me was that fight in the kitchen. Like, you, you, you were right. Like... I've worked in a kitchen like anything in a kitchen can be dangerous. Right. And in the end scene, like they've got fryers, they got gas lines, they got all kinds of stuff going on. And then there's a gun. The gun is the one thing that's not usually in a kitchen Mm -hmm. and it's sitting on the burner, just getting red hot, red hot, red hot. And I was sure that thing was going to go off and kill Tom Cruise (laughs) junior it, it, like, like you know, like I was sure that was how that was gonna go, mm-hmm. and then th- they killed Tom Cruise, Cruise Jr. and the, and the 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 main character is like, well, I think I got his life. Maybe I'm safe. Do you think I'm safe? And Molly's like, I don't know. And then the gun blows up and shoots right past his head, and he's like, Wow, I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> like, so there's a there's a rule in drama um, called Chekhov's gun. Okay, mm-hmm. so the description of this from Wikipedia is <laughs> Chekhov's gun is a dramatic principle that every memorable element in a fictional story must be necessary and irreplaceable and should not be removed. So if you show a gun in the first chapter, if it's hanging on the wall, in the last chapter, it has to be fired or don't show it, right? Mm-hmm. Final Destination is the biggest rule breaker of this rule yeah. ever. Like they showed us the gun, then the gun landed on the on the stove, then the gun heated up, and it was like this gun is the pivotal. Like this is the it. Like mm-hmm. like and then it doesn't mean shit. It did kill the detective. Yeah, well, when he was actually firing it, it killed the detective. Yeah. But when Death was in charge of it on the stove. It was. It did nothing. Death is a terrible shot. <laughs> no, death is like I would bother to shoot you, but that would mean I would have to expend some effort, and I don't need to because you're flying to Paris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one right? way, one way or another, you're you're ending up in Paris. Right. One way or another, you're going down. That's right. Exactly. So, hey, hey. Hello. <clears throat> 
Så den var Hej So what else, uh, what do we want to cover next with the uh, well, we can just wrap it up so like the uh, so we'll just wrap up our final thoughts on the film yeah the recap is so but and then the, we'll, we'll mention we'll make our predictions for phantasms yes so yeah exactly uh, and wait we already established Resident Evil's out right okay yeah everyone everything's out there's nothing because there's a new Resident Evil coming out like but that's 10 that's, days but it's but that's six that's right? like no it's like eight. Oh. okay um Okay, so there's there's one other thing that like fascinates me about this. Um, uh, when we when we said we were going to do a episode on this franchise and this movie, I was like, "What was what other uh, horror movies uh, have villains that they never show?" Mm-hmm. And I thought it was going to be kind of easy, right? Because I was like, you know, that has to happen, you know, relatively frequently. Yeah. So I was like, the mist. Oh, wait. No. You see a bunch of monsters. Yeah. And the crazy, we're, crazy lady. Yeah. Right. And the soldiers who kind of were like, were the ones who like represented Opened up the whole them, thing. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I, the more I looked, the more I was like, wait, I can't think of any. So I'm sure there are. I don't know what they are. But I couldn't think of any where they were like, I'm not, you know, we're not going to show you the villain ever. And weirdly, the one thing that popped into my head was Lord of the Rings, the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not the movie. Because the movie wasn't brave enough to do what the book did, right? But the Lord of the Rings book, Sauron, who's the villain, he's the blazing eye in the movie, right? Like, he's not shown ever he has his representatives like the ring wraiths and like you know Mm -hmm. but but he represents evil but he's not really shown and when the final confrontation happens he's a pillar of smoke that gets blown away by a wind (laughs) 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 which is ridiculous but amazing at the same time Mm -hmm. right like so the weird thing was I couldn't think of a horror analogy to Final Destination, only a fantasy one. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting because I feel like it's it's one of the most realistic horror franchises. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like, you know, you're going to get hunted by demonic dwarves or flying spherical balls or, mm-hmm. you know, dream evil people with you know, knife fingers or whatever. Yeah. It was like, you're going to die on a bridge or in a drive through <laughs> or whatever. It was super realistic. But the only analogy I could think of to it was to like the biggest fantasy epic <laughs> yeah. that I could think of. Right. And it's all a property of what they did with their villain. And I, I really just think that the thing that stands out to me most about this series is for all its flaws and, and for like the fact that like the characters are pretty cardboard and like whatever, like it, it was the one modern franchise that never succumbed to the temptation to cartoon up the villain, at least in appearance. Yeah. Right? Like or, Blair Witch just recently showed. Exactly. Her, they yeah. showed the Blair Witch. The Nightmare series, like, Freddy basically became a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Like, the in, in Jason, he basically, like, when you think about, like, uh, Jason in space was Jason X, right? Jason X, yeah. Like, he was, like, it looked like he was on, like, he ate someone who was on steroids. Yeah, he became, like, a comic book <laughs> right? villain, yeah. Like, this one, like, started with death being, like, there's going to be a song. I'm going to give you a number. Something mechanical is going to a screw is going to come pop out and next thing you know, you're dead Mm -hmm. and it ended the same way it started. Right. And, and the fact that it resisted temptation is the most interesting thing about it to me. Right. So that's what I loved about it. What I disliked about it was I, I, I I really felt like, um, there was a, an opportunity in it to have, uh, actual characters that kind of dealt with the legacy of what they learned. Like we are, right, it's, it's 2016. We all know how to research on Google now, mm-hmm. right? Like 
every Final Destination movie is like someone does some kind of cursory, like, oh my God, this has happened before. Or yeah, Tony they Todd dis- they walks up to you right, crazy, and yeah. goes, this is, I've seen this before, right? And they're like, oh my God. And then they just kind of relive the, oh my God, what if this is really happening? And by mm-hmm. the time they catch up to it, like it's over, right? Like there's a way to kind of like dive into that and have these people more haunted by the fact that they not only know that death is coming for them, but they know that this has happened in these ways to other people before. Mm-hmm. And the movie sort of head fake towards that with Clear Rivers, with Allie Larder's character from one and two, where she was like in the asylum and she remembered what happened before. Mm-hmm. And it dropped it. And I thought that was kind of like a mistake. So like, besides that, like I'm, I'm just, you know, I think it's one of the best modern franchises we have. Yeah. And I think, I just think ending it, the way it began right is it's perfect like the in, like you know because then it's just, it's just an infinite loop like if i if you had started <laughs> on five and then you're like oh that's how one begins let me watch one then all of a sudden you work your way back to five oh that's one <laughs> <laughs> right totally <laughs> it's almost like how do you how do you uh entertain an idiot read the back of the shirt how do you entertain an idiot read the front of the shirt <laughs> that's, how, <laughs> that's how that's a great that's how final destination would right would would suck you in there, but they wouldn't have to because it's a pretty damn good franchise. Yes. So now coming up here, like probably like tomorrow, today, tomorrow, a few days, next week. Right. Uh, there's a cont- a possible contender. The only threat to Final Destination Five on the horizon as the the highest rated fifth installment horror franchise movie ever is phantasm phantasm which is currently pre-release i think right Mm -hmm. rated at 60 it's like it's like two points ahead 64 yeah it's very close right exactly very close but that's all but that's all pre-release yeah um you know it's blair witch was at like a fresh rating and then released and it dropped down to 30 yeah totally you know i think phantasm I mean, I hope it doesn't suffer the same thing because I would love for another great fifth installment for a horror film. Sure. But we, we, you know, you never know. Predictions. Okay, so you think? Tell me what you think. I think. Does Phantasm finish? It's it's a direct. To, is it? It's not a the, theatrical release, right? It is. A, it, is it is a, a theatrical it is, release. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so that now I, now I change my my opinion on i thought it was directed video and i'm like well that just kills it i think it might be both like that's how that happens now right but i know there are theaters who show it well if it goes in the theater and it has a run ooh, are we guessing percentages let's guess just percentages. just ahead or behind does it beat 62 no yeah i don't think it does either no <laughs> i think if, if i had to guess percentages i would hope that it lands I'm going to call a number here. I'm going to say 40%. Yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, this is going to make me angry if this is how this goes, but I'm going to say 59. Yeah. It's going to be like one behind fresh. <laughs> yeah. On rotten. It's not going to be ahead of the other one, but like, it's going to get a second wave of nostalgia love from, you know, that's what I'm, that's what is having me pull for it. Right. To get to, you know, not be like, a, you know, a 12%, which is like half the other films and they're like, you know, third, fourth, fifth, totally. sixth installment. Um, but then again, Phantasms in terms of mainstream. Um, pretty unknown. It's pretty unknown compared right. to the mainstream audience. Like, you you know, you ask people if you've seen Final Destination, Saw, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween. They've, right. they've heard of Phantasms. Well, Alex hadn't seen any of the Final Destinations. But she sort of knew what it was. Yeah, everyone sort of knows right. what it is. But Phantasms doesn't have that, right? For one reason or another. And I know uh, Bad Robot did a 4K restoration um, for Phantasms, so maybe that'll, you know. Yeah, and they're sort of simultaneous, so they're gonna play off each other. But like yeah. that's what I mean is ultimately like, you know, the, know, the reviews settle, and then you know, film critics stop. Reviewing. I don't think I've ever seen it uh, a review where it started out a number and then just shot right up. It's always right. been like, it has its like number where the pre-release people see it. Yep. And then it usually goes down. You know, yep. So quite we'll, a bit. we'll revisit this in one year. You're saying 40, I think 59. We'll see. But I don't think either of us is predicting it's going to be over. No. Final Destination. In five. fact, because I was looking up other film franchises and I think Final Destination 5 
was only one or two points percentage points uh, behind of Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Crazy. So for it to be a few points behind <laughs> a Star Wars it's crazy. film. Right. I mean, I know people shit on the, the you know, the, the prequels. The right. prequels. But still, for a fifth installment for a horror franchise. Right. A new, I mean, it's, I mean, technically, it's, it's I still consider it a, new, a newer franchise compared to Friday, Halloween, and all the others. Right. For it to still be, you know, in the runnings of a Star Wars film. That's a hell of a comeback for a that's horror. A, right. That's a good. Especially, what was, what was four? I don't even remember what it four? was. Four? Oh, I think it was like 30 something. Yeah. It so wasn't. That, it wasn't good. So the franchise was headed in the same garbage direction. And 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 honestly, another thing, five was rated a lot higher than number one. Yes. Which is never how that goes. No. For horror, no. it's always one's great. How about two? I don't remember. Two went down. Two wow. was two was. I mean, they were all they were all below. It's crazy. Forty, I think they were all. It's crazy. At least all below fifty, obviously. But they were they right. were not doing doing good. And for five to sort of be them sticking their landing and that being. A see you later. Pretty unique. Yeah. That's great, and I think that's a, a, a great way how they should. should okay. End it. Other prediction. Oh no! I know <laughs> you're not prepared for this. I'm not prepared for this, but I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Name any franchise that has the possibility of pulling out a number five in the future that beats. If if I don't know which franchise it would be, but. It would. I. I. I think the only person who could do it is James Wan. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because I was thinking Conjuring Five might. I think. I think someone like James Wan can carry a film to the fifth franchise and still bring something to it. The guy, but because that's the thing is, um, the guy who did The Witch. I mean, I don't see there being five witches. No. You know, and it it would be forever in a There's day like before three witches in Macbeth. So, <laughs> so, so it'd be forever for him to get it, right? Um, you know, the, the guy who did Krampus and Trick or Treat. You know, I don't. The, those aren't franchises. Those aren't franchises, and I don't see him pu- pulling out the same you know trick four more times for either of those films. I mean, why would you need to? Right. So the well, interest- he's doing Trick or Treat too, supposedly, but that's been in the works yeah, for a while. We'll be dead by the time he gets to by, five. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't think that's going to be able to beat it. The interesting thing is, is, is how far you stretch the definition. Like I was wondering, like, let's say that Metacritic or whoever, um, gives a really high rating to Fox's Exorcist series. Mm -hmm. Like, is that sort of count? Like, right. Like, you know, what's going on there? Like, is this a, in, in strict numbers of terms of five, number five movies, like the the other franchises that we talked about either went past that mark and now they're on yeah. seven, eight, nine, like whatever. Yeah, like everyone we've list is past five. Right. Or except for Jaws. Right. There technically was a Jaws five, but it has nothing to do. It was a movie <laughs> and this is what we found out doing the research. There was a film <laughs> that was titled Jaws Five something, but had no relation to no. Universal's right. <laughs> Jaws no. films, which no. is weird. Totally unrelated. So I, I mean I don't think any of the franchises that are underway, except for like an Insidious or Conjuring, even remotely have a chance. And I'm just gonna predict this now. I don't think any of them are gonna make it either. They're, they're just the ones who have a chance. But I, I doubt that that would happen. I think they're gonna go the same critical arc as Saw, and get more boring um, and more predictable. Mm-hmm. So I I don't honestly and if, they, and if we count the TV shows I think it would have to be um uh it would have to be season five so it had to be season five of The Exorcist right because The Exorcist TV show is sort of building its own legs and not built totally. running off of what totally. was before it um the only <laughs> so this isn't horror but um I think James Wan did he do let me see, hold up let's see here uh. uh one second. Okay, here's why I think James Wan would would do it, because he did Fast Seven. Yes. Fast and Furious. Yes. Fast and the Furious Five. This isn't horror. <laughs> this isn't right, no no. This isn't I, horror. I love where you're going with this. Right. Fast Five is seventy seven percent. Oh damn! Right. So it's not horror. So it's completely right. different. But whatever. I mean, no, it's fine. But for a franchise, right. like to have a fifth film, that's true. Be like that. It's that's very true. That's he, insane. All right, he's a threat. But I, but James I Wan, he's he's done some fast. He did Fast Seven, so I yeah. think if if he if anyone was like, hey, here's a fifth installment of, 
I don't know. Yeah, he's a threat to do it. But like, I just the idea of like Oculus Five makes me want to kill myself. So like, I, I feel like the problem is his formulas aren't built to last the way Final Destinations were. But we'll see. Like, I, I, you know, I don't. <laughs> he's got the talent. Well, to do technically, it. if we were to do, um, his films, the way I would do it is since he did like Conjuring and then Annabelle, Conjuring Two, mm-hmm. and then what's rumored to be a uh, a film just about Valak. Yes. The Nun. Yes. I would consider Conjuring 3. Well, no, because technically that would be Annabelle. To, you know, Conjuring Annabelle, Conjuring 2, Valak. Oh, no, no, it would be Annabelle 2, and then the Nun film would be number 5. Right. Either we- that or Conjuring 3 if they were to do right. either of those. So whatever one of those comes yeah, out. that's possible. So whatever comes out past Annabelle, it's in the Conjuring world. I will consider that possible. The, fifth, the fifth one. I It's possible. I still don't think it's a mega. I... Here's what I think would have to happen. To topple Final Destination 5, Sam Raimi would have to come out of retirement and mm-hmm. do Evil Dead 5 <laughs> at some point down the road because I don't think anyone else... Oh, you know what, though? My own rules would, would kick me out because I would be like, Ash versus Evil Dead is in that universe. But then again, I'm considering TV different and I can't I can't make the right I can't make the difference for for right. just because of Evil Dead. No, I could. Well someone can won't. make another Evil Dead and then Sam can come out and be like, you would know, the what? Re- would the reboot? Sure, whatever. I mean we can figure it yeah, out. Yeah, because I I countered right. the Texas Chainsaw one. So totally. yeah, so the, absolutely right. so if, right. so there you go, Sam Raimi if you want to have the number <laughs> but one. But that's the only one and the only way it would work is if it didn't come out as Evil Dead five. It would have to be like, you know, a different name and like whatever. Yeah. Kind of like the way Blair Witch head faked and was like the woods and then, you know, like whatever. Yeah. But then it just blew your mind it was a great movie. Unlike <laughs> Blair Witch, obviously, but like that, that he's the threat. He's the one hanging back there. He's the dark horse that I could see, like, yeah. out of this. Otherwise, someone's got to start some new shit. <laughs> yeah, and then we're a ways away. <laughs> we're good up to fire. Unless right? they get like, so, can Disney you... to pop off films <laughs> like they are with Marvel. But wh- whatever. And you know what? Like, I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there shaking their heads right now. Like, I don't give a fuck. Who cares what Rotten Tomatoes says? Like, whatever. And, and I sort of agree with that. Like, that's, yeah. you know, whatever. So it's one website, it's one like rating or like whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, you take what happens, the arc of franchises, whether it's Friday or nightmare or like whatever. And, and I, you know, I love Wes Craven to death and I new nightmare makes me want to punch walls. Like it's, it's French. The arc of franchises is usually down. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's, any way to think about Final Destination without thinking that five is at least as good, if not better than three, and definitely better than four. So they did something that not many people do. Mm-hmm. Hats off to them. <laughs> nice job. That's a good. That's a good thing to do. Right. So, anyway, right. we'll, we'll come back with the Phantasm thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back and check out it. In but until then, right. join us next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>